Hello, Math 1050. Uh, this video is for Unit 8, Section 8.1 and 8.2, which is primarily about arithmetic sequences. Um, 8.1 kind of has a couple of little side topics, and then 8.2 has uh, topics focusing on arithmetic sequences. I believe everybody has already passed off this topic, so you really probably only have uh, five topics in total. Okay, first topic has to do with factorials. Uh, if you have a positive integer n, the notation n factorial, which is an n with an exclamation point, it means the product of each of the integers from 1 to n. Uh, usually we write them in descending order. So if I had, for example, 5 factorial, that would just mean 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is, uh, let's see, 120. Uh, and anyway, that's pronounced as or read as n factorial, with the exclamation point being the factorial symbol. So your topic uh, will give you uh, expressions similar to this, where you have to simplify your answer as much as possible. And what that means is uh, a simplified fraction not a decimal. So if you typed this expression directly into your calculator, it would give you a decimal value. Uh, almost every single one. Every once in a while a problem might come up where your calculator can handle it and put it in fraction form answer, but most of them give you just a decimal. So you have to be able to do these by hand. And it's really not complicated. The easiest way to do it is to write it out. Uh, 3 factorial means 3 times 2 times 1, and we're multiplying that by a 6 factorial, which is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And I know it seems like kind of a pain to write these out, but it's the best, fastest way to do it. Uh, 5 factorial on the bottom, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and a 7 factorial on the bottom. 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And we want to cancel or reduce as much as we can. So we have a 3, 2, 1 multiplying on top and a 3, 2, 1 multiplying on the bottom. We can reduce that. And on the top we have a 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And on the bottom we have a 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So we can reduce those. So what we're left with is all of the numbers that were shown on top um, were reduced. That means our numerator is a 1, not a 0, but a 1. And on the bottom, what we have left is a 5 times a 4 times a 7. Now, you still don't want to type that in your calculator. It'll still give you a decimal if you type it in now. What you want to do is only evaluate what is that bottom number. And in this case, if you calculate 5 times 4 times 7, that's 140. 140 is our denominator, so our answer is 1 over 140. Let's try that again. Uh, we have a 5 factorial, so 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And we have a 6 factorial, 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. On the bottom, we have a 3 factorial and an 8 factorial. So looking for things that reduce, um, I've got a 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And I've got a 3, 2, 1. So what that leaves us with is... On the top, we have a 5 times 4, and on the bottom, we have an 8 times 7. I would look for other things that cancel. So, for example, 8 um, is on the bottom and 4 is on the top. We could cancel out a factor of 4, leaving a 2 in place on the bottom. And so our numerator is 5, and our denominator is 2 times 7, which is 14. Again, you do not want a decimal on these. It will get marked wrong.
Okay, next topic uh, has to do with sequences. A sequence is a set of things, usually numbers, that are in order. So example of that would be three, five, seven, nine. Uh, each of those numbers is called a term. So we've got the first term, second term, third term, and fourth term. The dots means that it goes on forever. Um, sometimes these are also called elements. So this looks like a sequence of odd numbers that start at the number three. So our topic says find the first terms of a sequence using an explicit rule with multiple occurrences of n. So we are going to find the first four terms of the sequence. Uh, and here is our sequence here. So it says to start with the first term, n equals 1. So our first term is going to be negative 1 times, and we're basically just subbing in 1 for n for this first term. We're going to sub in 1 here, here, and here. So our first term is negative 1 to the 1 plus 1 power over 1 plus 2. Well, that's a negative 1 squared which is positive one over three. So the first part of our answer is one third. Our second term, we're gonna sub in two for n. Negative one times two plus one power, or sorry, to the two plus one power, not times. And then on the bottom, two plus two. Again, I'm just subbing in two for n. Well, that's negative one to the third, which is a negative one. And in the denominator, I have a four. And now I'm going to find the third term, because remember, we're finding the first four. So this is my third term. Negative 1 to the power of 3 plus 1 over 3 plus 2. This is a negative 1 to the fourth. That's positive 1. And my denominator is 5. All right, first four. So we need this last one. That would be negative 1 to the 4 plus 1 power over 4 plus 2. Uh, this is negative 1 to the 5th power. That's negative 1 and a 6 on the bottom. So those are my first four terms. So in Alex, as you type that in, you're just going to list it with commas. So it would be 1 third comma, negative 1 fourth comma, 1 fifth comma, negative 1 sixth. So we found the first four terms of the sequence that follows this rule. Okay, the rest of the topics focus on a type of sequence called an arithmetic sequence. Um, in an arithmetic sequence, the difference between one term and the next is a constant. Or in other words, we're just adding the same value each time to get the next term. So this sequence um, right here is showing you that we're adding three each time. We add three to get the four, we add three to get the seven, we add three to get the 10, and so forth. Um, so that plus three is called the common difference. And the common difference can be a negative number as well. Uh, so the first term is called the first term, and the common difference tells us what the next terms are going up by each time. So our topic is to identify arithmetic sequences, and then if it is an arithmetic sequence, we need to tell what the common difference is. So if I look at this list of terms right here, the first term looks like it had five added to get this next term. And then uh, the next pair, it looks like it's another add five and another add five. So this looks like it is an arithmetic sequence. And my common difference is that I'm adding five each time. All right, let's look at our next sequence. So let's see, I go from two to six. So that looks like adding 4. And then I go from 6 to 18, so that's adding 12. And then I go from 18 to 54, and that is adding 36. So this is not an arithmetic sequence. It has to be a common difference. It has to be the same difference every time to be arithmetic. Okay, last one of these. 
let's see, I go from 9 to 2, so that's a negative 7. And then from 2 to negative 5 is negative 7. And again, the difference is negative 7. So it looks like this is an arithmetic sequence with a common difference of negative 7. And it is okay for that common difference to be negative. Okay, for the next um, topic, or really the next two topics, we are going to need to use um, this rule right here, or this formula. The nth term of an arithmetic sequence is given by the formula, the first term plus n minus 1 multiplied by the common difference. And this formula is on your Dixie State formula sheet. So this is a, a formula that we can use uh, to help us write an explicit rule for a sequence. So in order to write a rule for the sequence, and I guess I should say that what our goal is, uh, remember on this problem back here, we had our explicit rule that we used to calculate the terms. Our goal is to write an explicit rule for some arithmetic sequences. So our goal should be to have the nth term is blah, which tells us how to calculate it. Okay, so we're going to use this formula to help us. So our nth term is the first term, 25, plus n minus 1 multiplied by the common difference. So let's see, our common difference is that we're subtracting 7 each time. So I've used my formula right here to write out an expression. Now Alex does want you to simplify this. So what we just need to do is distribute that negative 7. So we get that the nth term is 25 uh, minus 7n plus 7. And then we just need to combine a couple of terms. To get that the nth term is 25 plus 7 is 32 minus 7n. And that would be our rule. So if I, for example, wanted the fifth term, it would be 32 minus 7 times 5, which would give me negative 3. And you can see that negative 3 would be the correct next term. Now, you don't have to calculate the fifth term. It didn't, didn't ask you to do that. Uh, it asked us for the rule or the explicit formula, and that's what we have. So I want to go ahead and try that one more time. just takes a second, but sometimes it's good to have two practices. So here is our little sequence. So the first term we can see is negative 5. If we think about our common difference, it looks like it's 7. So our formula that we can write out is that the nth term is the first term plus n minus 1 times d. We're going to distribute and try to simplify it a little bit. So that would be negative 5 plus 7n minus 7. We have some like terms that we can combine. 7n minus 12. And there's our explicit formula for the nth term. Okay, we have one final topic. Um, if you have an arithmetic sequence, um, sometimes we have a goal that we want to be able to add up all of those terms um, and that it's called a series usually when you add up all the terms so if 
we could find the sum of the first n terms. Um, you know, it would be possible for us to manually do that by just listing out all the terms and then, you know, just punching a bunch of buttons in our calculator. Um, but that takes a long time. And also the larger your n is, uh, the less feasible that really becomes. So um, there is a simple formula for computing the sum of the first n terms of an arithmetic sequence. And that is that the sum, we use a capital letter S for this, the sum of the first n terms is equal to n multiplied by a plus, oh, sorry, a1 plus a n. So the first term plus the nth term. And we want to divide that by 2. Um, so in order to use this formula, we have to know how many terms we're adding up. We have to know the first term and we have to know that nth term. Um, on your formula sheet, you do have these rules again. Um, so we have this rule that we've been using on the last topic, and then we have our sum rule. Please note the sum rule is exactly the same. It looks slightly different because they just have it as an n over 2 instead of having like a long fraction bar, um, but it's exactly the same. So that is on your formula sheet on the back. So we are going to do two examples of this. Uh, sometimes Alex will list out the sum like this. So it says starting with 8, we're going to do 8 plus 3 plus negative 2 plus dot 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 all the way to negative 657. And it does say that we are to assume that this is an arithmetic sequence. So in order to figure out the sum, we need to know the first term, we need to know the last term that we're adding up, and we need to know how many terms there are. So we are going to first figure out the first term. Here it is, eight. We also need the last term, negative 657. Now this one does not directly tell us n. It doesn't tell us how many terms are here. So we're gonna use this formula in order to figure out or to calculate what n is. So we do know a sub n, negative 657, and we do know a1 is 8. We don't know what n is, so I'll leave that n. Oh, I missed my plus sign, sorry. We don't know what n is. That's what we're going to try to calculate. Um, but we do know the common difference. If we look at our sequence, we can figure out that the common difference is negative five. So just like before, I'm gonna distribute. I'm solving for n here. You don't have to distribute, but I don't know, I like to. Negative 657 is equal to eight minus five n plus five. Be careful with your signs. The eight and five can combine to be a 13. I'm going to subtract the 13 from both sides of my equation. So I get negative 670 is equal to negative 5n. And then I can divide by negative 5 to find out that n is 134. So that was the last bit of information I needed in order to calculate the sum. So now I'm going to use my sum formula. The sum of the first 134 terms of this sequence is equal to the number. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry. I totally wrote those in the wrong spot. That's ridiculous. I'm sorry if you were wondering what I was doing before. Apparently I can't read labels. Okay. The sum of the 134 is our n value that comes first. And then we want to add up the first and the last term that we're using. 
and we want to divide that by 2, and you can just calculate that in your calculator. So the sum of the first 134 terms is negative 43,483. Okay, we're going to try that one more time. Um, it's the same goal to figure out the sum, but this time, instead of giving us a list that we're going to use, this time we have uh, some different notation, which is called summation notation. So this symbol is a symbol, uh, Greek letter sigma. It means sum or add up all the terms. Um, below it and above it, you see some numbers. The number at the bottom tells you the starting term. So we're starting with our with term number one. It doesn't have to be a one, but it often is. And the number at the top tells you the ending term number. So we're going from the first term up to the 129th term. And then next to it, you'll see a little rule for calculating each term. So this is saying uh, negative 3 times j plus 12, or it's the same as saying negative 3 times n plus 12. So um, our, this one, even though the notation is probably new to you, this one actually gives you all of the information pretty directly. Um, so it's not too hard to calculate the sum. We need to know the first term, the last term, and how many terms there are. So for the first term, we just sub in 1 to our little rule. So this is 9. The second, oh, sorry, we don't want the second term. The n value again is at the top 129 so now we're going to calculate the 129th term negative 3 times 129 plus 12 and our last term in this sum is going to be negative 375 Okay, so we're ready to calculate our sum. The sum of the first 129 elements is equal to the number of elements multiplied by the first plus the last, all divided by two. And we calculate that in our calculator we get negative 23,607. That is it. So let me know what questions come up, um, especially with this summation notation that's kind of new. Um, <laughs>